This video has been brought to you by Learn Flutter Code, the learning platform that cares. So let's get started. Thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is the async providers or we call them future and stream providers and we are going to use the back end service Firestore to help us understand how we can implement it with these async providers. So I'm going to start with the future provider. So what are future providers? So future providers listen to a future and expose the results to its child. We have here a very simple example of a future provider. So inside a future provider, we have the create parameters that pass in a build context. If you don't know what this underscore is, basically this is just like an anonymous argument that if you have not used any arguments that is inside these brackets, then you can just put this underscore. And these create parameters require a future method or function or in this case, a Firestore call. Then we will pass the results of the Firestore call through the child parameters. Before I continue, do you guys know what a future is? Well, a future is to represent a potential value when successful or when it is not successful, it will return an error, which will be available in the future. So I have here a very simple example of creating a future that returns an integer type. And in the future object, there is two methods, the then method and the catch error method. The then method is when the future is successful. So it returns the value and you can manipulate or handle the value as such. However, we also have to catch errors because not all futures are successful. Therefore, the future will return an error value or object and you can handle it by either putting it in into the log or printing it out. And let's have an example of a simple Firestore database. This database has a names root collection and a couple of documents. Inside a single document, there is a key name and a value of a string. Simple enough. Now, I'm going to explain how we can extract the data using Firestore. Did you know Firestore has two types of data? So one type of Firestore data is a collection of documents and the other is document. Basically, one is a list of documents and the other is a single document. Well, I'm going to start explaining what the collection of documents way of getting Firestore is. So to create a future that returns a collection, you will have to create a Firestore instance that calls the collection name over here, which is called names and it uses a get documents method. As you can see here, the get documents method is actually a future method, which is what we want for our future provider. Then you have to insert it inside the create parameters as such. At the same time, you have to add the type of future provider that is returning or the value of the future that's returning. This will assist you very, very much on getting the specific future function. So I have an example that we can pass this future provider to a name list widget. Then inside this widget, you will get a data as such provider dot of query snapshot with this question mark dot documents. As this is a future, the initial data is null, which will cause an error if it was called using the document getter method. Therefore, having a question mark helps to return a null value instead of using the document getter method with the null value. So then if the document's variable is null, then we can say that it has an error or maybe you can say it is waiting. Once the data has loaded successfully, the documents will return a list of documents. If it's empty, then you can return a very simple message that says, oh, we have an empty list. So this is when you need a collection of documents. 
So the next thing is, what if you want a single document, a very specific document? Well, to get a document, you will create a Firestore.instance and .collection names, and then you will have to get a, the specific document ID with the get method. The get method, as you can see, is a future type method which reads the document. And the implementation is a very similar to the collection reference. Only thing you need to change is the type that you're passing through. Instead of collection snapshot, you are going to use the document snapshot. And we have the same example. This time, instead of the dot document, you will use the dot data. And at the same time, you will have to use the document snapshot over here. So this dot data will return a map object with the string as the keys and the value as dynamic. Then you just have a very simple if statement that captures a null document, which returns a very simple text error message. And if we were to go to our fire store and change the happy value in our first document, which is the top name of our Flutter app, to the value said, what do you think will happen? Will the future provider update or not? Hmm, if you said nothing happens, you are right. I'm still happy though, don't worry. So this is because future will complete its task whether it fails or succeed and it will not listen to any updates finishing the task. With that said, let's move on to the next async provider, which is stream provider. So a stream provider is a provider that listens to a stream and expose its results to its child or descendants. So this is a very simple stream provider implementation. And if you were to see the previous implementation for a future provider, there is no async keyword because streams does not require an await or async keyword. But before I explain further, do you guys know what is a stream? Well, a stream is, in my own words, it's a continuous flow of data events. It is actually more complicated than this definition, but for now, this is just a simple definition. The example over here is a stream that periodically or in every one second, it will print the value 15 times or in total basically this whole stream in 50 seconds will print out every second so this is how you can create a simple stream from the stream object and it can get very complicated very fast and there are two ways obviously that you can use streams to get two different types of file store data so the collection of documents and documents same thing so to get a stream of single document instead of having the get method you will have the snapshots method which returns a stream of document snapshot as you can see over here now this is how you're going to implement your stream provider. Nothing much has really changed except for instead of a future provider, you will use the stream provider and because you are getting the document, you will use the document snapshot. At the same time on top, this is just a way for you to get your single document or just a point of reference in your Firestore data structure or database structure. The next thing is this is how you're going to implement your stream provider inside a very simple example. So there's really nothing much that is changed inside our previous future provider except for our stream provider word over here. And most of it is the same thing. Then over to the next one is the collection of documents and implementing it is as simple as just switching it to snapshot. And implementing it in a stream provider is as such. Nothing has changed so far because the snapshot returns a query snapshot. Let's make sure that your type inside your stream provider is a query snapshot. And having it in an example of a Flutter project is pretty similar to what we have in our future provider. Now, if I were to change my happy name, which is at the top of the name list, to a sad name. What do you think will happen? Do you think it will change in our app? Well, if you guess it will change, 
you are right. This is due to streams having the functionality of getting updated by changes made. And this is why streams are a really powerful tool. With this knowledge, I have a challenge for you. Look in this block of code closely. Do you see any bugs? I have a similar challenge in my previous video about multi-provider. And inside this code block, you have a multi-provider and with two stream providers and each of it returns its own Firestore data. The first one returns a list of names of document. So get names from Firestore returns a list of names of document. The second get images from Firestore function returns a list of images documents or just the path of the images. Then in my widget, I created a variable that refers to the names then in my widget, I create a variable name names and it reference to the query snapshot. Does it have any bugs? The answer is there is a bug. The names variable is referring to the query snapshot data type, which has two of them. In actual fact, the name variable is actually referring to the image snapshot because if it was up to the provider, having to decide which same data type to choose, it will choose the latest one, which is the image snapshot. Therefore, how are we going to resolve this to get the name snapshot instead? Well, you can have function to return its own data types. So the get names from Firestore return a list of names while the get images from Firestore will return a list of images. Then to reference the list of names, you can add the type list of names in the provider. That's simple. So in summary, what we have learned so far is we know what a future and streams are. We also know how we can implement Firestore with these async providers or future and stream providers. And we managed to differentiate the same data types by returning its own unique data type. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this provider explanation videos, subscribe down below and say or comment down what are the concepts or provider topics I should create next. Stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.